Hey, Endless Honeymoon Podcast listeners, if you love this show, the best way to support us is to buy some merch. We have a coffee mug, we have an amazing beach towel, and we have some very cute short shorts in many sizes. That's right. So if you want to get yours now and make your butt look like Natasha's butt, go to EndlessHoneymoonPod.com slash shop. Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. Natasha, you got that COVID voice. You, you got know, a lilt in your voice that sounds that sound a little bit 19-ish. I was thinking <laughs> that it's maybe from the weather. Don't you feel like every... Because my child isn't sick. Don't you feel like every person that talks about having allergies is actually a sick person trying to convince you to let them hang no. out with you? Everybody's like, oh, they're allergies. I'm like, oh, I didn't realize you were an infectious <laughs> disease specialist. God, I got to tell you, I was already a hypochondriac before all this COVID stuff. So now I thought about sleeping in a separate bed last night, but I thought you'd be insulted. I don't feel sick. I'm just like sneezing and like, I feel like I'm, and also I was like smoking pot and I don't usually like smoke it. And I feel You don't like, usually smoke pot? What are you trying to create a ul- 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 ulterior no, I s- identity? Actually, you're right. I do smoke it before the podcast a lot. You're a hardcore marijuana addict. Oh, my God. You are. An addict? I would say you are a junkie. Honey, people don't know that you're kidding. I know you don't like that line of jokery. But listen, I don't think you're a drug addict. I do think you have COVID-19. Oh, my God. Honestly. Well, then I would like to know why you continue to use my toothbrush after I beg you not to. Okay, this is an issue we've been having. And, we and would... I would like to take a poll. Okay. Because you've been trying to use my toothbrush since I met you. Well, here's the thing. My thought is like, we're already swapping spit. Why not use each other's toothbrush in a pinch? I don't do it de rigueur. It's a pinch every night for you. It's not a pinch every... I'd say five out of seven nights you use my toothbrush. Okay. First of all, in the middle of you trying to give that example, I felt you kind of forget how many days of the week there were and then remember <laughs> it again. I just think that if you're in an intimate relationship with someone and you can't find your toothbrush, that it's like not a big deal to use theirs. But if you're the kind of person who can't find your toothbrush most nights, like you can't find your wallet, can't find your keys, can't yeah, find your se- toothbrush... Separate issue. Were you going to put this into the poll? This feels like a separate topic. My point is to our listeners, what's up? Tuck is who's right here is I, I got to be honest with you. This is one I can feel myself losing before we even uh, give it to the people. Well, because just because you French kiss someone doesn't mean that you want your plaque, like whatever is like, you know, scraping your plaque every day, Mm. scrape. I don't know. It just feels like. I should clarify that. The reason I'm so adamant about this, you mentioned French kissing. Natasha and I French each other, <laughs> I would say, constantly. Like, I would say 30 to 40 minutes of sustained deep kissing a day. I mean, that's pretty much... If you shared a toothbrush with someone who had COVID-19, you'd, you'd definitely get it, right? If you shared a bed with them, too, and and shared a lovemaking session, you probably get that. All right, Anyway, well, you're the one with COVID. I should be... I'm the one that should not be using your toothbrush. Exactly my point. I drink point. your milkshake. And I don't have COVID. I have You sound like you do. <laughs> I just have like allergy. I really think it's allergies. Maybe you have COVID-18. Oh my have you thought God. about that? Barely legal COVID is COVID-17. But turning 18 in June. Remember when everybody was um, counting down the days until the Olsen twins turned 18? <laughs> that was a collective statutory <laughs> fantasy that we all had as a society. What the hell is wrong with everybody? <laughs> I was in a conversation with somebody the other day about this, um, about it was a TV storytelling kind of uh, story breaking brainstorming session. I don't want to say too much information. And there was this person and there was this character in the show that like had like slept with a a high school girl. And the person who wrote the story, I was like, well, yeah, you got to deal with the fact that the guy's a bit of a creep. And she's like, I don't see him as a creep. I'm like, what? He's like a college student. I'm like, yeah, he's a creep. She's like, you're telling. She goes, you know you when you were in college would were like trying to hook up with 16-year-olds. I was like, no. You weren't? No. We didn't find out about statutory rape in the year 2017. It was no, you didn't you no. I felt the lines were always blurred. Because you were a young woman and and you would date older men, is that what you're saying? I guess. I always dated older women. I was always, I I lost my virginity. I was 15 and the woman was 47. 
That you're lying. I'm not. She was a she was a lady of the night, and and she worked at, at a brothel in Shanghai. And, and I was. She in told the, you her age. She said, "Hello, I'm 47. Please come in." Well, Mosh, um, I don't judge you. I no, I'm. There's no judgment. I didn't lose my virginity to a 47 year old. Uh, my point is, I don't know what my point is. I would like to know what people think. If you were married. And you can't find your toothbrush. Do you not use your partner's toothbrush? Be honest. Don't just agree with Natasha on principle. Be okay, honest. Okay, but can I add one thing? No, you cannot. <laughs> you can't add anything. Because like you're just acting like it's once a year, but it's like almost every night. You've said that already. Everybody okay, I just want to make sure because it's like, you know. What? Usually I use my own Because maybe once a year it would be okay. Like what, on Christmas? Yeah. You would let Christmas me do it on Christmas? Yeah. Christmas, Christmas morn? <laughs> That'll be the one way we continue to celebrate Christmas. Or on a cute vacation and we share our toothbrush. That might be cute. Oh, you want to go to Paris and buy a Paris toothbrush on our way? Yeah, and it's like, oh, we're just, sh- oh, that weekend we shared a toothbrush. That's pretty cute. <laughs> that does sound cute. Um, look, I'm never doing it because I want to if I can't find my toothbrush. Okay, all right, all right. Well, let's take a call. Okay, and then we'll, take a call. we'll, we'll take get a poll, back to this call. next week. All right, let's find out what our callers think, even. Okay. Now we're going to call Beige. Beige? <laughs> Beige? It, the way she made... Right, no, it's not Laura's G- fault. It's well, first of all, that's not how you normally spell that name. Yes, it is. Page? No, P-A-G-E. No, that's how you spell what's in a book <laughs> that you read. P-A-I-G-E? Yeah, that's how you spell the name we're Page. We're going to call Page in Boone, n- North Carolina. We're going to call Beige in Poon, <laughs> North Carolina. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi, Paige. I accidentally called you Beige for a second. Yeah, she said we were calling Paige. In, no, I said Beige. We, she said we were calling Beige in Poon, North Carolina. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> Love that. What's Boone like? Uh, Boone is getting cold. We're in the mountains, so it, we're getting into winter now. Is it the like beautiful, idyllic version of North Kakalaka? I, I would say yes, uh, especially a few weeks ago when uh, the leaves were all bright and colorful. They're kind of on their way out now. But yes, very beautiful. Just beautiful, golden, crisp leaves, a sharp tint of Christmas in the air, not a mask to be seen. All right, Paige, holler at us. How can we help? Okay, so the reason why I wanted to chat was because uh, I am a late bloomer when it comes to sex. Um, Due to some weird, unfortunate medical reasons, I physically couldn't have sex until I was 24 years old. I had to have a surgery. Um, So I'm 26 now, so it wasn't that long ago. And, you know, there's been a pandemic. So I'm very inexperienced. Uh, Haven't really been able to get out there. And I want to change that now. I want to make up for some lost time. Um... Ideally, you know, I'd like to find maybe like a casual, like friends with benefits type of situation and like get some practice. But I don't know. I'm just a little nervous about that and a little insecure that like guys my age would be weirded out by my lack of experience. Mm. I'm, I love all of this. Not all of it. Can I ask you personal questions? Sure. I'm just curious. Yeah, by the way, if you say no, we'll just cut this out of the podcast and it'll be like I never asked. Can are you? Are you down to tell us like what the issue was and what the surgery was? I'm just curious. Yeah. So it probably sounded more serious than it was. Uh, Basically, you know, all girls have like a hymen. You have sex the first time and it breaks. Uh, But that doesn't always happen. Some people have too much of it. Like mine was covering almost everything. Couldn't even use a tampon. So that's what surgery was for to get that out. You had like a thick with a double C hymen. That hammer was that hammer was thick, girl. That's right. So then they just went up and they and they removed it, and now you're good to go. Yeah, they cut it. Yeah, so I should be good to go. But you know, for like most of my life, sex has been kind of like a painful situation. So now I can still be a little tense, which is why I feel like I need the practice, and and I want to get that. Mm. I would, I'm just, I was just thinking like, maybe don't tell that story. <laughs> Why not? She wants to be real. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha, maybe I won't be so honest. 
these guys, but I will. I do think they'll know that I'm a little less experienced than the average 26 year old. Well, I think a little mystery is OK. You know, I think it's kind of cool if you're like and also I don't think you need to tell people how experienced you are. And also think about it this way. If you were a Christian or like had a different kind of upbringing, you know, from yours, like maybe you would still be a virgin or only had sex three times by 27. Like, who knows? Like, there's a lot of reasons. You know, sometimes people just accidentally become, you know, it starts to get each year kind of goes if you don't have it when you're 20 and then it's 21, 22. So there are a lot of inexperienced people out there. I think what's important in sex is, you know, your open-mindedness. And it sounds like you have kind of an open mind. And I think that guys would find that really attractive. And I think that just... Coming at it from that angle, I think maybe you could have like some real fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm with Natasha. Like the, the, there's no unless you're with like a real Casanova and uh, the odds that that lover is going to go, oh, I I can tell that this this is a thick hymen um, medically, uh, you know, uh, experientially stunted. It's just like it's not going to be like that. There, most guys your age are going to be maybe more experienced than you, but they're not going to be like so experienced that they're like, I can't, I can tell, I can tell you haven't done what I need you to be able to do. And that person, if you do find somebody that's like super experienced, might be the perfect person for you because that guy might be like, oh well, I'll show you the world of you know what i've learned about sexuality i just feel like have you had sex since the surgery do you know that it's comfortable now i have had it it hasn't been super comfortable which is why i feel like i kind of need to like mm. more and like practice it but with maybe you know someone that i feel comfortable with so so you're saying at the, the tell me if this is true at this point sex intercourse is still uncomfortable not so much because of the physical stuff but because you had so much built up around the physical stuff in the past that now you have a tension around that and it's harder to go there yes i can be tense uh and i just think that will go away with practice so that's the issue just looking for someone to have that kind of practice with i got a suggestion totally okay i do too i think this is perfect because you can kind of pretend like you want to meet someone but really you're kind of using them for like practice sex mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so like that puts you in a cool position as a woman you know i think like you know you're just kind of secretly using these guys for sex okay okay so Natasha. you know or just for fun a little bit you know it's like you're it's on behalf of the boys of boone <laughs> i just want to say um i think natasha's right like and and my suggestion would actually be that you find someone um, like a friends with benefits person that like you like you want, but you say to them, uh, even though this is like a casual thing for me, sex it's not about an emotional uh, uh, commitment thing, but intercourse comes later. So for a while, I want to have a casual hookup situation. By the way, nine out of ten guys are gonna be like, great, whatever you offer, they're like, I love that, whatever any offer, they're like, that's what I was thinking, you know. So. So you're not. It's not like they're going to be like, no, it'll be sex or nothing. So I, that's what I would suggest. If you want a casual partner, you say, I want to do a couple of months where we just hook up, We're, but no, but no intercourse, no what? sex. She needs to say that on her online profile. No, I'm talking about when she look on your online profile. You go, I'm looking for you know a friend with benefits. You'll be flooded. What? No, she. You just want it to happen, don't you? Or do, are you really trying to go online to find a friends with benefit? Like answer a want ad. <laughs> what, like what some era are you dude. living in? Are you talking about using the internet, or are you talking about finding someone in your life? Um, yeah, probably the apps. You know, I'm in a small town, so I'll probably be on some of the apps. I'm saying that's what I'm saying. But there aren't apps that are like friends with benefits. There's not like a friends with benefits, honey, dating been, app. Yeah, is there? there there is, and it's called <laughs> all of them. It's called every one of the dating apps. That's what they are. But I'll, I'll forget it. You don't even have to lead with friends with benefits. All I'm saying is when you start interacting with these dudes, you say, I'm down with something casual. But the but the thing is, and you don't tell them why, because they're not going to be like, why? Did you have some sort of medical uh, implement? You know, They're not going to ask. You just go, I want to do a few months where we just have like hookups, but we don't have sex. And the guys are going to be like, sounds good. I mean, if you know, and then you'll grow in comfort with that person and then you'll be like okay now i'm ready and by that point i bet you'll be like you'll have hooked up with that person so many times you'll have a physical familiarity with them and you'll be able to go there what do you think 
I think that um, I guess that works. That seems like weird advice, but I do think. What's your advice? You well, would use I, use the men of Boone as a body <laughs> as a, a lump of flesh that you can writhe on top of while you gain experience. <laughs> the men of Boone. No, I was just gonna say like I think you know, it's okay to tell someone the entire story. I think it's very interesting and, you know, it's personal, but I'm just saying, don't feel like you have to tell them, like, as soon as you meet them. Like, you can say, like, if someone asks, you can say, you know, I haven't had sex a lot, so I want you to be, are you open to being gentle with me? You know, like, or maybe there's something you need to say. Mm -hmm. You don't have to tell them all in one, at, at that night, you know what I mean? Like, it seems like that would be exhausting, you know? And just kind of lighten it up a little bit, you know, like there's no, it's not that weird, I don't think. Well, that's good to know from hearing it from somebody else. That alone is good to know. Well, she's right. If you were 37 or 47, it would start to be like, damn, it took you that long to figure this out. Wow, that's really intense. But 27 is kind of like, there's a lot of 27 year olds in the world that probably have an equal amount of sexual experience as you. And it has nothing to do with this thing with this medical thing i think for you my sense of you is because when there's stuff going on in our bodies that's like different or odd it becomes bigger and magnified and you become self-conscious about it and it becomes this gigantic story and so then you're like every boy i ever hook up with will be like this person's flawed i get i can feel their flaw but like the reality is there's a million 27 year olds that are less just as experienced as you or or less experienced than you that just because of that for no other reason than that's how that's how much experience they have so the guys you hook up with aren't going to be like i smell a rat this person's had a it's not going to happen like that so just go slow go at your own pace your own comfort and i find i feel so strongly that you're going to be you know, having a great, a good old time. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. That's good to know. I will get on the apps. Uh, any advice, any particular guy that I should, you know, look out for for this job? Yes, there's a guy. Actually, I'm so glad you asked. There's a guy. His name is uh, Horner Adams. He lives just outside of Boone's, uh, Boone, and he's at a distillery. He works at a whiskey distillery. Now, this guy, I feel like this is your guy. What do you mean, what kind of what kind of man should you find? Yeah, I guess for, I'm not looking to date, you know, just for this casual sort of thing, you know. Who's you the have ideal a, candidate? You have a, what'd you say? Who's the ideal candidate? Well, you have a choice to make. Natasha, did you have a thought? I mean... No, I don't think that, there's a lot to answer. You have a, well, you have a, cho a classic choice to make. Do you go with a guy who's inexperienced like you so that you can fumble through stuff together? Or do you go with a guy who's like way more experienced than you that can guide you into the promised land? That's a tough one. What do you think, Tosh? You can never know. I mean, I, this, I, I, I didn't know I was going to marry Moshe. Right. I'm saying like it could be anybody. That's true. Yeah. What, what, what? We'll find who you're attracted to and then take it from there probably i think you need to figure out what's important to you so if sex is important to you you want like strong sexual connection that's like what you're into right now that's what you should be looking for i guess if, if i you, i have a thought Any, as long as you feel safe and you know it's along that line anybody that feels even close to pushy which is kind of why i counsel you to do this uh, i want to do a few hookup sessions where we don't have sex any person that's pushing you to have sex once you say that is probably not the guy for you. I don't see a pushy guy as a good fit. A pushy guy is not good generally, but a lot of guys are pushy if I'm being realistic and honest. But a person that's really super respectful of your of where you're at. I mean, honestly, it's funny I'm saying like, no, another woman... I would say go for the pushy guy that won't respect your boundaries in any way. I, this is probably good advice for anyone, but for you in particular, I feel like somebody that you can sense is both open-minded sexually, but also super respectful of your boundaries. Because like Natasha said, you don't have to tell him the whole story, but you want to tell him enough that he knows pushing you is only going to make you retreat. It's mm -hmm. just going to make you build up a thick hymen around your heart. Up until that last part, you know, that was such a good advice, Moshe. I really <laughs> The last part, one step too far. I'm always trying to find the joke, Paige, and you'll have to forgive me. 
Okay, Paige. Well, good um, luck. Keep us posted. Okay, I certainly. Well, thank you guys for your time. That was so nice. No, will you though? Will you c- contact us and tell us in maybe six months, like what's going on? If you found Honus. T- yep. Sounds great. Thank you guys. It was nice to meet you. Nice meeting Bye. you. Bye. What's so sad is that because she's in Boone, in six months she may not be alive because she's not vaccinated from the COVID-19 virus. So is the, is that like a thing that people in the South aren't vaccinated? Well, yeah, it's a joke. I mean, plenty of people are vaccinated in North Carolina. It was a little joke, little joke I, I But see. But yes, that is definitely a thing that people in... in like the, the Southern states. Well, not the Southern. The redder the state, the less the vaccination rate. That is just, that is true. It's so interesting that science became political. Like, it shouldn't be political. I guess it always was, though, huh? It always was. Wait, Moshe, I have a question. You're yes. saying that friends with benefits app, like an app that's friends with benefits, like, isn't a friends with benefits someone who you become friends with first, and then you're like, oh, yeah, we can fuck. No, you don't find them on an app. Because if you found them on an app, then you'd be strangers, and then you'd be fuck. Strangers you'd, with benefits. Fuck buddies. I guess that's something else. Fuck buddies and friend. Is there that is a a fascinating question, Natasha? Is there a difference between a fuck buddy and a friends a friend with benefits? I know what you're saying. You're saying classically speaking from ni- from the nineties, right? People that listen to Nirvana growing up think of a friends with benefits as someone that you became friends with and then added benefits to, mm-hmm. and then but now it's become a shorthand for someone that you are just. A friend, a cat, have a casual sexual relationship with. Right. Like it's like what people say, but I guess I'm thinking of it more philosophically, no. like what it really is. Yeah. I, that's a fair point. I think the apps, though, I would say my guess. Now, Laura, our producer, can speak to this more than me because I am only on the only app I'm on right now is this infidelity app and it's very <laughs> secret and has its own rules. But wouldn't you say 70 to 80? 70% of the relationships on apps, if not more, are about casual hookups. Yeah, we got a deep nod. 70%? If not more. We got a deep nod, I scrunched, you're, you're, like, a, you're like, an idiot. No, my, no, it was a, I'm right. No, no, I know, like I'm an idiot. Oh, like Natasha's an that idiot. That many people are there to hook up? I would say, yeah, it's like, it's, it's, it's mostly, it depends on the app. Some apps are like really geared towards like love connection. Like... So people are just like, I want to fuck tonight. Who could I fuck? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then do they come back to the same people? You ever seen, um, I saw this short film uh, uh, about a guy. I never did this because I didn't do the swiping because I was on OkCupid. Okay there was no swipe. But the but was it OkCupid? Okay OkCupid okay was the one I was on. It's Tinder was the swipe, right? I got off dating apps before Tinder. But the way that guys would do it, maybe girls too, if you, you, you know, you swipe ripe. If you, if you swipe ripe, you swipe right if you think they're if you're interested and left if you're not, mm-hmm. right? So what guys will do is they'll go on to and maybe girls do this too. They go onto the app and they swipe swipe right like on like like do 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 like just every single person and then they go back to see who swiped on them and then they cull from there to get a more curated list and then they'll be like, "Okay, great. I've got 30 women that I swipe right on." And they and they liked me back, but they're not going to be attracted to like sixty percent of them, right? But here's the thing: they let's say well, but you don't really know what you're no, attracted to li- from online. But listen, yeah, they sw- they swipe right on a hundred women, right? You're saying sixty percent of those women they're not going to be attracted to. But what if the forty percent of women that they were attracted to didn't swipe right on them? Now they can't connect. So now they go, oh, you know what? I'm not attracted to them, but they hit me up. So fuck it. And Laura's saying it's not women that do that. It's only guys. That do that. <laughs> Our producer said just guys do that on a message board. Okay, the least surprising revelation of this podcast. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? Because a guy's like, look, a woman I'm not attracted to to hook up with is better than no one to hook up with. Isn't that awful? That's what th- that's what's happening on these apps. It's not like somebody's out there like I'm going to find my one. But if it's that, girls must be doing something like that. If it's. 60 or girls 70% are, is... I would say girls are suspending disbelief. But I mean, a lot of them are looking for a casual hookup too, just not that casual. Most of the girls I talk to are looking for a boyfriend. But yeah, but the, it's the women that you know. It's the age range of women you know. I know people who are in their 20s who are looking yeah. for a boyfriend. Name one. <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> what do you mean name one? I'm not going to tell you. You don't know any women in their 20s. What are you even talking about? What are you talking about? Name one woman in I'm their 20s. I'm not going to tell you because there are people that people a, might know. Name a woman who is in her 20s <laughs> in the world who exists. <laughs> Listen, all I'm saying, Moshe, is... That women like casual sex less than men? Yeah. Revelation. You heard it here first on the Endless Honeymoon. All I'm saying, Tosh, is that while that is true, some women do want casual sex. Not every woman wants a boyfriend. I would love to talk to one of those women who's culling her feed and doing the the, the guy's thing. I believe, Laura, that that doesn't exist. That, that, <laughs> that person doesn't exist. Guys are gross. What can you do? Guys are horny creatures. Women are horny creatures too, but they express their horniness in different and less um, transactional ways than men, I think. Well, I feel eternally blessed that I met you before I had to go join online dating apps. You never did one? No. Never? No. That's crazy. You want to know what's crazy about online dating apps for me? Uh, speaking of casual versus um, versus serious, I was on two dating apps at the same time towards the end. One was OkCupid, which I was using mainly for casual sex. And one was JDate, the Jewish date. Which I was using to f- try to mainly for lunches, th- ma- mainly for free lunches. No, <laughs> mainly to try to find like, I don't know, a nice Jewish gal to like have a, a relationship with. That was the fantasy anyway. I had no success on JD, like nothing. No one would write me back. When they did write me back, Re- they did would, you put up a rave picture with like the gauges in your ears? I don't know, but the point is, I was there looking for love. No one was interested in me there. Over on OK Cupid, over in the fuck zone. I was getting hit up. It was like just all the time. And it, I I was having a lot of casual fun. So I don't know. I was I was looking for love and I couldn't find it. What do you think of that? I would love to see your profiles. They're gone, honey. They're they're wisps, carcasses in the in the inner in the endless hallway that is the internet's deleted information. I just think that I can't tell if I like someone from online. But that's not... Yeah, then you go out. Then you hit them up. You text back and forth. You go, oh, this person's intriguing. It sounds so competitive. Well, I'm sure, but it's competitive for men. Well, it just feels like going out into the real world feels less competitive because you can like vibe with people and you can already go to a thing that you think is cool and then you right. know that everyone there has a similar taste and then That's you true. like meet people at the bar and you can vibe and that just feels like, I don't know, like just randomly looking at people's pictures and a song they picked and like a picture of them laughing with their friends. All I can say is you sound extremely old and out of touch and like a boomer. Like a Karen boomer. That's what you sound like to me right now. I get what the youth are going through. I mean, the thing about dating apps, I'm joking about that, but the thing about dating apps, you're right. They are more artificial and more transactional and weirder and competitive on some weird level, but they are also, they take the guesswork out of what, of what people are there for. Do you ever have, I've had relationships when I was out in the dating world that went on for years where I was like, are we, is this, are we romantic? I can't tell. And it just, did you ever have anything like that where you'd go out again and again and you could never kind of get past the awkwardness of whether or not you were romantically connected and nothing ever came of it? That's just a woman trying to escape the advances of her friends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, hey, Tosh, do you think we should uh, listen to a secret or two? Yeah, let's do it. Hey, Motion Natasha. Um, my secret is that early in the pandemic, like right when lockdown started, my roommate got stuck living in his mom's house, and I liked having the apartment to myself so much that every time he mentioned possibly coming back, I would uh, like start coughing or say I had a fever, so that I just like wasn't feeling good. And I did this multiple times and ended up having the apartment to myself for five and a half months. And it was great. I don't regret it. So, thank you, guys. Bye. I've noticed that young people call it lockdown. Like, we call it the pandemic, and I think maybe it's because, like, it was kind of this, like, family fun kind of time where we all so got really So we called really it close. something nice, like yeah. the pandemic? <laughs> but, like, all young people are like, <laughs> when I was in lockdown, like, it feels like they were in jail. Wait, pandemic doesn't sound good. I know, I know, you I know. it sounds more festive? The pandemic. I don't know. It could be, like, maybe some kind of festival. I, yeah. <laughs> are you going to pandemic this year? <laughs> 
<laughs> Actually, I just got an offer to play Pandemic. <laughs> See, it works. Yeah, I like that. But like lockdown, that's like locked up raw. That's like, that's what like prisoners. Locked up abroad. Yeah, they're like um, lockdown. A, I like Because they were in hell. Don't you think this person, this person wasn't in hell. This person was living alone for the first time in his life. But even, right, that sounds fun. But I think a lot of single people alone, like, especially like people in cities where you don't have like outdoor space, like. That must have been a crazy time. Uh, yeah. I think... No they, one to touch or talk to here's in, the worst, in the flesh. The worst part would... Not worse. There's a lot of bad bad things. But don't you think it would have been so shitty to move to the big city from like wherever your town was where it was cheap and be like, you know what? I'm going to take a big swing and I'm going to spend all the money that is required to live in a big city. And then you get there and then bam, lockdown and you don't get any of the benefits of the big city, but you're still paying big city rent. That would fucking suck. Yeah. You know, spending seventeen, eighteen, nineteen hundred dollars on a studio apartment in Manhattan or LA or San Francisco and I don't you can't think even you could go get outside. A studio apartment for nineteen hundred dollars in Manhattan. I think you can. Let's do another poll. <laughs> Would you brush your teeth with your partner's toothbrush? And can you get a nineteen hundred dollar studio apartment? I believe you can. And one more thing. Yeah. Would you like to hear another secret? Uh yeah, please. Hi, Marcia. Hi, Natasha. I just experienced my secret, and it is too disgusting to share with anyone, so I will share it with you. I am helping clean up after my friend's baby shower, and there were a lot of balloons. Um, And as I was gathering the balloons to throw away, I thought it would be fun to inhale the helium and make my voice funny. Well... I got a straw in the balloon, and I sucked all of the air out, and my voice didn't change because it was one of the balloons that we had blown up ourselves with our own lungs, and so I've inhaled an entire balloon full of somebody else's breath, which just feels like the opposite of what I've been trying to do for the past two years, and honestly, for most of my life, so... Hopefully, I survive, and this can just remain my disgusting little secret. Okay, thanks, guys. That is a very funny idea in COVID times to inhale a lung full of somebody else's vapor. It's so easy to forget stuff, though. Like I, I, know. I went and got a massage, and I went into the steam room, and then I was like, oh, wait, is, do I want to be in a steam room? Dude, I was shotgunning a blunt with this chick, this 19-year-old <laughs> chick, just back and forth shotgunning with her at this music <laughs> festival, and then I was like, wait a minute, No, I'm but someone married. wanted to like pass me something, like a joint, and like, right. um, you know, I would Have you taken normally... a puff on a joint that's gone around? No. I did something but the other day. But it's sometimes you you forget. Oh, I saw some Or you drink the you know someone's drink. I walked by an author that I'm a big fan of and I know his wife and he and I went and this was like in the height of the pandemic and I just was so you know overwhelmed with being excited to meet him that I like shook his hand and it was like clearly we weren't doing that. Like the vibe was clearly not we're not loving, doing that. I'm not loving shaking people's hand. Right I hear now. you. I'm just saying I was like, oh, What's cool. What's wrong with elbows? What is wrong with elbows? Uh, but I do kind of like close friends. I will kind of like kiss on the cheek. Close friends for me, I'm kissing deep in the mouth. <laughs> Seriously. That's my greeting. It's a Jewish greeting. Are you not familiar with that? No, honey. The deep mouth kiss of the Lithuanian Jews? No, I'm not. It's one of our specialties. Okay, let's hear another secret. One more secret, and then let's move along. Hi, yes, I am calling with a secret. When I was in middle school, we went to church camp, because that's what you did in Texas in middle school. And it was more of a social thing. But during the big, you know, faith and fellowship, when the band is playing and everybody's singing and worshiping. Um, one of the ministers asked if, who accepted Jesus Christ into their life. And so I stood up because I assumed that's what everybody did there. And when I suddenly looked around, I was one of about five people um, in a room full of hundreds. And people were running up to me and hugging and crying. Um, and I suddenly realized they thought I was accepting Jesus Christ for the first time in my life. And so um, I went along with it for the weekend, but it 
turns out I'm an atheist and I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, so I'm sorry to all of them. Um, but, uh, I really just went to have fun. Okay. Thanks. Bye. So was she ever a Christian? Sounds like she just went to a Christian conference to have a good time, which is more concerning to me than this lie about accepting Christ into her heart. I mean, I do think that Jesus Christ, those people, like when, when it's like speaking in tongues and standing up in front of everyone and very like displays of Christian, you know, Jesus Christness, that must, if you were growing up among that and you didn't like it, that would definitely make you an atheist. Do you think when someone was speaking in tongues ever, they've ever said hamana, hamana, hamana? The speaking in tongues thing is weird. And Most I've known young Christians people. don't do that, though. No, but that that's like I, my, my, my friend it's dated a someone. It's thing. Yes. And then, the, but she spoke in tongue. What did it sound like? I don't know. It's it just, always sounds the same. It sounds like vaguely fake. Are they just like he- improvising? Yes, it's fake Hebrew. It's just they're going... <laughs> You can always notice that there's like rhythmic Wait, there's, there's repeating. nothing like, there's no like. Nothing, zero, that I've ever heard. It's, it hasn't been documented in writing or no. anything. No, you mean they write it down and they well, discover that it's crypto it's like, Cyrillic? It's, does crypto Cyrillic mean? Um, nothing, I mean, I think that's the alphabet of the Russians. <laughs> Something. Well, is the idea that they're not saying actual words? It's nonsense. Just and you can hear it when you hear the Pentecostal speaking tongues. You can hear that they start, they start repeating f- phrasing because they don't know words, so they're just going like, They just start saying. See, I would date a Christian, but not if he did that. You wouldn't do a tongue one. No. <laughs> yeah, the deep tongue. Kiss I couldn't of the, do of that. The Christian I don't think so. I couldn't do it either. You speak in tongues? Uh, uh-uh, I'm out. I'm out for sure. And you too, but we don't do that. But if you start, if you if you're ever like, oh, I get to a special place, but don't you like chant? Although those are but real that's words. totally different. That's why I'm asking: is is it just they're just kind of like making it up? Yes. They're do they do? Into the, do the they zone. have a thing? Or some people Listen, really good at it? I can. Fu- yeah, I'm sure they're. Oh, but- like, how do you try to not like? Maybe making an impression, like doing an impression of someone. <laughs> I'm sure some people are really good at. It. Here's the thing: there is precedent, spiritual precedent for getting into like a into a, a an ecstatic state. You know, like the Maasai warriors in Africa, they just jump until they go. They or the Sufi the Sufi Muslims they'll they'll twirl until they get into an ecstatic state of like right, hyper like that. bliss. That's, so that's probably what I don't like to twirl is. though. You're not a twirler. No, oh, you're a spinner, not a twirler, right, honey? Uh, Okay, I see. That just by expressing themselves with their like, you know, whatever comes out, yeah, that they get freedom. To a, they get to a vibe, it's a like spiritual a vibration. Dervish, or yeah, exactly. Okay, it's a dervish from Kentucky. Okay, all right. Well, I, I guess I understand that, but I still would not date one. All right. Well, let's take a call. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Let's take a call from John in a very special town. Oakland, California. Oh, my God. Can you please not ask him about every bagel shop in Oakland, though? <laughs> what do you think that's what Jews from Oakland do? No, but I just what, don't want to... What, what bagel shop do you... John, <laughs> what bagel shop in Oakland do you like the best? It was not a Jewish thing. Just like, I know how you're into, like, <laughs> you know, asking people about Oakland stuff. I just like Oakland, and when I see somebody from Oakland, I'd start to... My heart starts to pound. Right? Yes. <laughs> I what, feel you. I feel you on that. What neighborhood do you live in? I live near uh, MacArthur Bart, so I think it's Longfellow. My my, this is my neighborhood. Anyway, how's it how's it going over there, John? It's 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 good. Weather's good. Actually, you are by a pretty good bagel place right there at MacArthur, right? Isn't Beauty Bagels right? Beauty's Bagel right there? Yeah, actually, yeah, it is. That place is good. They like people say boy chick bagel. Is the best bagel in America outside of New York, apparently. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. We also love Gordo's. Ah, oh, Gordo Taqueria, the 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 great greatest taqueria known to man. <laughs> anyway, John, let me not reminisce about Bay Area food. Natasha had a question for you. Oh, what's up? What's up, bro? <laughs> what's going on? How can we help? Or can we? I I mean I think I think uh, my specific question will be pretty easy for you guys. All right, so let's do it. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, definitely. Most recently, I read uh, I met a younger guy 
um, who I'm really into. Uh, biggest issue is he's in LA and I'm in Oakland, obviously. Um, I want things to go well, but I'm worried about being too available for him. Uh, or even worse, texting or messaging him too much or too often to the point where he's just like put off. So like, how do I balance enough communication to keep things interesting without going overboard? Mm. You know the answer. What is it? We <laughs> tell. What is it? You just have to do less, and it's hard. Is that right? I, that's. I mean, that's my what instinct. I do. Says the opposite. My instinct is not do more, but my instinct is like if you're in, if you're in a zone where you're feeling like you have to play games with how much you can communicate with somebody that you like, that should be a red flag that's about a relationship. True as well, like you know, if I like someone, if this guy was giving you the energy, then it would be. It would not be an issue. You'd be like, text, 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 whatever. We're we're vibing. We have this magical connection. But if you're feeling like, oh, damn, I'm pushing him past it. How long has it been? It's only been about like three weeks, I want to say. Okay, so it's newer. Ooh, I get that. I have, I, have a good, I have a good question. Yeah. yeah. What's your text vibe? Do you like to do jokes? Do you like to be, do you like to like unload your day do you like to say um your family plan for the next 40 years no like like <laughs> moshe he was always doing jokes you know so like that's that's like different than like you know someone who's like hey always always needing advice all day or giving i don't know what's your what do you want out of this relationship text wise that's a good question i i i think it's i want to say like i would love to be like on Moshe's level, where it's just like jokes all day. I want to be entertaining, but it's hard to I, do. It's 20, 20, 20 plus years in the comedy game. You know, it's going to take a long right? time. You got you got to start now, right? You want to be entertaining. Yeah, I get that. I, exactly. I want to be like. I don't want to be like. Oh, so we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Well, let me um, let, let me point out something that you said that I now am noticing as a red flag. You mentioned he's a younger guy. Now, this wasn't germane to what you were asking about because at all. Like, it's not information that was necessary. But you said it, and then your next thing you said is, how often should I text him? So to me, I'm thinking, you're feeling a little bit insecure in this relationship in general. And that, to me, is the bigger issue than whether you should text him. Because like, if you're feeling secure and confident in a relationship, you'll, you'll say, fuck the games, I'll text this person as much as I want. But these two bits of information that both you say he's younger and you don't want to make him feel like you're pressuring him or overwhelming him with communication makes me think like you're just a little bit you're not very secure yet in this one and is that fair no i think that's fair and i think that's like a good that's kind of why i wanted i asked the question specifically the way i did because like i don't want i want it to be like if things don't go well with this guy i want it to be like improve for the next one you know what i mean do you have a thought i have a thought well, it definitely already sounds like maybe you don't think it's it's going very well. It sounds like you're doing five texts and then he's not responding. Yeah, I think I, I think that's close. But I also think like I have more time on my hands than he does. Right. Everybody has time to text back. That's just especially a young person. That's all they do. They don't they're incapable of doing anything but texting. We saw four young people looking at a sunset this weekend and they were on a ham a double hammock on these two palm trees and they were all four texting. Yeah, they were looking As at a sunset, sunset <laughs> in a hammock but texting at the same time. <laughs> yeah. And like that was like that's like my feeling too, but like I actually like caught when I actually like had face to face time with him. He was actually like rarely on his phone. Uh huh. Like, yeah. Here's what I think. This is my I my strong feeling. You should never pay attention to the instinct in you that says I have to strategize about the. Uh, I have to figure out the strategy about how to communicate with a potential love interest. I mean, if that's it, that's not exactly true. That's my feeling. You think you think it should oh it should never feel like a little nervous or like oh what should I do? I'm not saying it shouldn't feel nervous. I'm saying you shouldn't be creating a false strategy on how to communicate with this person just enough that you'll keep him on the hook. It's like 
when you you text with the person in a way this is my feeling if you're interested in this person you text with the person in a way that is natural and normal to your desire to speak to that person if unless you're like a weird annoying person and you don't know that about yourself and you've got a bad personality and you text like 50,000 times a minute if you're a normal person and you can ask your best friend, am I a normal person or am I not? Because sometimes people don't know that about themselves. But if you're a normal person, you should text them as much as you want to communicate with them. And if they don't communicate back with you, they're doing the, you a great favor by saying to you, I'm not the person for you because the way you communicate is not, I don't want to communicate with you that much. And then you can, you, that's what I think. You disagree, Natasha? No, I think you're right. Do you though? I mean... <sighs> Give me, give me the the true Midwestern, because I'm also from Chicago, so like I'm a little amalgamation of both of you right now. He's just not that into you. Mm. I mean, he asked for it. You should write a book, honestly. You should write a book. <laughs> Call it that. I mean, no, I think right? I think she's probably right that you're getting a signal from this guy that he's not uh, if he's not communicating with you as much as you're communicating with him that he's not maybe as engaged as you as you are. But I don't think it's because you're engaging too much. It's because you're learning about whether or not this person is for you and what good information if And it, and also use your energy to split your time a little bit too. Like you can still be looking at other people, you know? This guy yeah. Lord in AA a, a, who's such a good and insane speaker covered in tattoos he looked like skeletor he used to say when, about dating he would say are you my person if you are come toward me if not get the fuck out of my way Ugh, like, i would hate to date a guy like well that. he was that very intense. awful he was intense but the point is his point i thought was well made which oh was oh my god this, with, that's horrifying it, what it's like are you gonna fuck me no he was if just not <laughs> Get the fuck away from me. <laughs> All my point, the point that he was you making. You lady, you fuck me. No, the point I thought he was making. I have tattoo on my eyebrows. Why all of a sudden is he like a man from a village in the middle of nowhere? My point is that all you want is information when you're looking for dating. You want to know, is this person into me the way I'm into them? And what better way to get? To get that information, but the, to engage with them. And the moment you realize, oh, this person is not for me, get the fuck out of my way because there's some other guy that I'm supposed to be with. And I'm I'm wasting my time here with this young, you know, Los Angeles guy that's too busy to text back. I could be, when I could be meeting the Oakland boy of my dreams and, and having and bagels and burritos. The truth is you have a long distance relationship. And so, you know, the the texting, phone call, whatever tech tech vibe needs to be strong. So if it's, you know, if it's not, it's just going to peter out. I will so. say this too, though. When Natasha and I first started dating, I think she probably texted me back less than I texted her. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if she's interested, that kind of thing. But then it did change. So sometimes it changes. Things don't always stay static. Oh, I, I started annoying you with my texts? Well, no, you started turning around and paying me a little bit more attention. And I thought to myself, okay, maybe she really is interested. you know. And if it had gone on the way that it was going in the very beginning, I would have said, I think it's very important. One of the best skills, one of the most difficult skills in dating is taking a hint. Because they're sometimes almost impossible to get. You know, because people aren't communicating clearly in dating. They're always like doing half honesty and taking a hint is difficult, but it's important. That's what I think. No, I, I definitely agree with that. No, I mean, I think also too, a tricky aspect is like um, a language barrier. So like his English isn't all that great and my Spanish is very rusty. So I'm like, most of our communication is in Spanish, so... You didn't mention that. He could have been staring at your text for the last week, just going like, I do not understand what this <laughs> motherfucker is saying. <laughs> you could have insulted him in Spanish. You know what I mean? You you thought you were saying, your eyes are so beautiful, and you said you have the eyes of shit. You don't know what you said. <laughs> but no, I, I actually did think, I, I, I think I said like uh, something about him being embarrassed, and like um, he got like very... Like, not frustrated, but, like, I was like, oh, shit, did I, like, say the wrong? Like, I didn't mean, like, embarrassed like that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think I think that you should definitely look into Google Translate as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John, well, good luck. Good luck out there. Thank you so much. And we'll no. come have a bagel with you someday. 
<laughs> no, thank you for taking the time uh, this weekend. It's Our really ple- Our pleasure. Okay, have fun in Oakland. And have a Gordo's burrito on us. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Will do. Well, Natasha, I'm glad. This is two different situations where, once again, I'm glad I'm out of the dating game. And glad that I'm in the marriage game. Because it's so much simpler with you. Do you know why? Why? I love your toothbrush. I love your plaque. I want to make a plaque that says, I have this lady's plaque. If you would like to leave us a secret, give us a call at 213-222-8608. Or give us an email at endlesshoneymoonpod at gmail. And also, we're on Instagram and we're on YouTube. Yep. Find us where you find your podcast, apple.co slash Endless Honeymoon. And until next time, Natasha. Subscribe. You have to stop saying that. I love you.